Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, you know, I like to always ask questions. Um, 10.18, Romans 10.18, where it's saying, but I ask, have they not heard? They be in Israel, right? Yes, they have. The voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world, right? Now, we're talking about Israel who's always um, been preached the law of Moses since they were kids. The emphasis that um, Paul is, is talking about now is um, the gospel. Fast forward 2,000 years since he resurrected. Can I say that the gospel has gone through the whole world? Have not the whole world heard the gospel in all different messages? I mean, not messages, but um, languages. To a degree, yeah. Um, you know, miraculously, through dreams, through people speaking in tongues. Um, you know, even in the book of Acts, there were people from different nations that, that were gathered in one location, but they spoke different languages. And it's almost like those people represent that nation, you know. But fast forward to today, the gospel has been preached way more than it was back then. And supposedly, there's probably still some, Amaz some Amazon-ish, you know, kind of tribal areas that probably haven't been reached yet. I don't know, because I haven't been around the world. It's just what statistics say. But, you know, I know, I know that Yahuwah reveals himself in dreams, visions, you know what I'm saying? So I, just, I think I just the work is still that, being done. I just and, brought that out. I believe, that, I believe uh, Book of Revelation talks about... Um, if I'm not mistaken, that there are going to be angels, messengers who preach the gospel. They're going to take the gospel all over the earth. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna do it in a super mode, like in a way that's never been done before. But so I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. I would say the work is still being done right now. I just want to put the a difference or similarity between the fact that Israel at that time had the law, statutes, and the commandments that was constantly in it, and some of it, some of them did um, abide by it, and some of them did it. Contrast to us today on the gospel being preached to all the world, some of us are gonna accept the gospels, and many of us are gonna not accept it. That's that's the whole point. I brought that. Good stuff. Good question. Uh, let me go to you. You're going to bounce off of what Roy said, right, Rod? So I'm going yeah. to go with you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jared. We don't uh, go far away. I was just going to say in, in verse 18 of, of uh, Romans, Paul's actually quoting Psalm 19.1, mm -hmm. which, is, which is saying that the heavens are proclaimed in the steam of hell and the expanses declared in the work of his hand. So basically, all know, all who see should know. Okay, because of uh, the stars and the creation. Right, all creation. That makes sense with Romans uh, yeah. chapter, what, one or two or something like that? Yeah, I absolutely. One or two talks about that as well. That's a good point. That's a good point, Rod. Uh, Jared, what you got? All right, verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? For most, most, Moshe saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. And I... Uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14 the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come again he sent forth other servants saying tell them which are bidden or invited behold I have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things that are all things are ready come to the come unto the marriage but they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, other to his merchandise. And the remnant, the remnant took his servants and entered them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city and saith to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were, were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage, 
or invite to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many of the many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with the get with guests. In other words, they invited certain people, but the certain people didn't want to come to the wedding. So they said, "Okay, go out into the streets and get anyone you can find." Mm. Mm-hmm. All the other nations, all the Gentile nations. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Got it. It took me a minute. Thank, thank you for adding your words at the end, because I was like, where is he going with it? Where is he going? Nope, that was it. You got it. You nailed it. Nailed it, Jared. Thank you. Uh, brother Christopher, I'll let you jump in there. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. This is a question, and I don't expect. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me, Brother D? Yes. This is a question that I don't anticipate being answered um, right now, but I do want to propose the question so that, that you all, as brothers, can bring clarity for me. Okay, so if we can agree that Christianity, to some degree, when we look at its history, has presented a corrupt gospel, I, I mean, I'm, and I'm not saying every Christian, but if we look at it as a whole, they are presenting to the world a corrupt gospel. Yeah. And can we say that the gospel has truly gone out to the world? And the next question kind of to uh, uh, part B to this is who then, who then is the true believers of Yahuwah that should communicate the gospel correctly? Because I can, we, we can all agree that Catholicism is corrupt and they've claimed to have shared the gospel. We can say, that some of the same men who were birthed out of the Catholic Church, like the Protestants and the Reformers, claim to present a true gospel, but we can see some corruption there. I, here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to be quiet and let you all answer this, but I see from world Western Eurocentric history that a group of European men have claimed to be the gatekeepers of true gospel and the true theologians, I don't hear anybody being quoted from Hebrew Israelites, or I, I just don't, all I hear is the quotation of Eurocentric men from the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century, and we're all agreeing that this message is corrupt, then who is the true messengers that Paul is referring to? I, I just, I'm trying to identify these, these men and this group or this movement because I just don't, I can't say that the gospel, the purity of it has been spread throughout the world, unless I'm missing something, unless history is telling me something different, because all I have is what the, what the um, New Testament has said, and then that history gets silent, and I'm looking for evidence of that continuation of the gospel preached by Kepha, Yochanan, Saul, and I, and I don't know if I'm seeing it, brother, so I'm asking for help, like, are we those people? Are we the people? And are we as those people, are we fulfilling the commission of the Ruach HaKodesh going out and sharing the true God? I'm just trying to figure it out, guys. That's all. So my question is, has the gospel truly been the, the message in its purity? With the, with, you know what I'm saying? Okay, we have, we have this figure that men call, call Jesus, right? I'm, a, I'm not going to be long with it. But we have this figure that men call Jesus but they don't even know he was an Israelite. They don't even know that, that he's tied to a, a nation of people. And it's just like, honestly, it's a Eurocentric view of Jesus. But yet they're saying, believe on this man. And I'm confused. Is that the true gospel? Or is Jesus, as they call him, really an Israelite, born king of Yehudi, or the, you know, of Israel? I'm just trying to figure it out, Jim. So if, if, I know it sounds convoluted, what I'm saying. But I'm just asking, is the true gospel being sent out to all the world? And if so, who are those barriers? Who are those carriers of the gospel? Because I want to meet them and join with them. You let, already have. Let me start. Let me start. <laughs> because I feel like I am, I'm, I'm a big voice here. So let me start, and then I'll let the, roll, the ball roll. Um, I can take any translation of the Bible and show people the gospel. Any translation. Even the translations that don't have the Father's name in it. Because I'm glad that it is not a prerequisite for us to know who the Father's name is and who the Son's pronunciation is in order to be saved. 
I think it's more important to know who the person is and and all the scriptures that show us what what's required for us to be saved that never says you must believe that the Messiah is an Israelite. I'm glad it doesn't say that. It just adds another difficulty to it. Even though that's common sense, it should be easy to see, but it's not a prerequisite. The prerequisites are to believe that the Messiah is the word of God and he became flesh. He dwelt among us. He obeyed God's commandments perfectly. He died and he resurrected for our sin. Now, the definition of sin is going to be different determining on who the communicators are of the gospel. However, the scripture's definition is consistent. So wherever there is a printing of the scriptures, whether it's an NIV, whether it's an ESV, whether it's KJV, whether it's Catholic, whether it's Greek, I'm sure that you can get the same message that we're preaching out of all those translations. And in that sense, I believe the gospel has gone out farther than it has since the first century, in this, especially after the printing press and the printing of the gospel. And now we can download the, the gospel on our phones, on our apps. So I think as I'm getting away from the people now, I'm getting away, I'm getting away from the Christian pastors, I'm getting away from the theologians, I'm getting more to the actual source, the word, the scripture is getting out there. More, um, more resources are being available to get to the Greek text, to get to the Hebrew text, the Dead Sea Scrolls and all these things. All this information is being out there to give us more understanding. But the simplicity of the gospel isn't even all that complex. It's as simple as believing. I do believe there are Christians who are saved. I believe there are Christians who are our brothers because they have committed their life to the Son of God who died and is the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. They believe he, he was a real person in history. He died and he resurrected and he's coming back for us. But where that seed gets eaten by the birds that come and take it away is by the bad theologians and the bad doctrines. So the gospel is being preached, but the gospel is also being distorted by the same people. So that's my, my opinion. To give a straight answer, I don't know the percentage, I don't know what the percentage is in the world. The earth is too big for me to wrap my head around it. But I do know that this Bible has been printed all over the world. And I can, I can show people that the law is not done away with, with any translation of the Bible. Even the message Bible, I can show you that the law of Moses hasn't been abolished. The message, which is probably one of the worst translations out there. And then there are others that I probably won't really mess with, but you know, like the New World Translation and a Mormon, you know, I don't mess with those. I'm talking about Protestant, you know, Protestant Bibles, even the Catholic Bibles. Catholic, Catholic Bibles mess up the Ten Commandments and they do some funky stuff, but the gospel message is the same. It, it lets us know that God's Son, who is the Word of God, came in the flesh, died, and resurrected on the third day to take away the sin of the world. And if we believe in Him, we will be declared righteous. That message is consistent no matter what translation you go to. But now, what is sin? And do we have to obey the law? That is something that requires a Ruach HaKadosh and a good teacher. That's my answer. And I don't know if it answers it directly or not, but I do, in short, I do believe the gospel has been getting spread. And uh, we are the people. I think the people who are undercover, who are underground, those who don't have the greatest resources, I think those are the people we should be keeping our eyes on, not on the people who have great lights, great cameras, great video effects, um, all the good resources and the monies. I don't think, you know, we, not that those things are bad, but sometimes you overlook the ones who are really preaching gold, gems, diamonds, because they don't have the glamour of high tech technology and, and uh, expensive resources. So. I think uh, we always have to search for the underdogs. Yeah, and then Brother Chris, if I can uh, bring some uh, scripture to help you with the clarity of what we're dealing with Jesus being this, uh, this false image, right? So if you go to uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, uh, starting at verse 3, uh, all the way down to uh, all the way down to verse 17 until the end of the chapter. Um, it says, let no man deceive you by any means 
for that for that day shall not come except uh, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Yah, or that is worship, so that he as Yah sits in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is Yahweh, remembering you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withhold that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who knows let it, let, only he who, who now lets will let until he is, until he be taken away. And then shall the Torahless one be revealed whom Adonai Yehoshai shall consume with the ruach of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yah shall send a strong shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, mm -hmm. that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yah for you, brethren, beloved of Yahweh, because Yah has from the beginning chosen you to Yeshua through sanctification of the Ruach, and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by the Besorah to the obtaining of the glory of our Adonai Yehoshai HaMashiach. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and keep the commandments which you have been taught, whether by word or our sefer. Now our Adonai Yehoshai HaMashiach himself and Yehoshua, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and works so in other words the falling away has to happen while the good news is going out yes there has to be there has to be a great deception a great falling away and there's always been a remnant it's always been a remnant. So I believe there's a remnant in Christianity, in Christian churches. There are people right now who are in transition, who see this stuff, but who still attend the churches. There are people who are more and more getting more uncomfortable as they attend the Sunday church week after week and are becoming more and more uncomfortable because they know that there's more. They know that they're not being told the whole truth. I, I believe there's also people in Judaism that are transitioning out as well. There's people right now as we speak that are probably like, what I've been taught as a child is a lie. The Mashiach is real. You know, my rabbi is not telling us the truth. And they're becoming more and more uncomfortable. But the good, the good thing about it is they don't have to be, they don't have to have this whole thing down packed perfectly. I believe that these people are declared righteous by their faith because they already believe, even though they're not fully out, you know. So the remnant is out there, man. The remnant is out there. But the deception, I think, is always going to be greater. The great falling away, the apostasy, the, all the stuff that uh, uh, Mecca just read was, was excellent. And to your other part of your question, we are the chosen ones, us that understand the truth and are, are seeing this. We have a responsibility. You know, we, we've come into this truth not by, you know, not by chance, but by his will. You know, he selected people who will be outgoing to bring the truth. You know, I, 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 whenever I do anything, I try to do some things with perfection. I'm sure a lot of you guys here are the same way. When you do something, you like to do it right, you know. And, you know, I believe that those are the people he selects and those are the people that he has pre-chosen. You know, people like us who, who hear it and, who, and then get, feel convicted and con feel convicted enough that we must bring the truth to light so honestly my brother i feel like a lot of us in this group are chosen by him to bring this truth to other people you know as far as we can reach and just to be fair real quick then i'm gonna let um uh marshall uh, marshall go and then rod okay but real quick just to to balance the scale 
Chris, there's people amongst our, assemb- our, our group, our kinds of people that aren't really in it. They're not in it for the right reason. So there's still wolves even amongst those that sound like us and preach like us. So it's not about what we say, how, you know, we could say Torah, we could say Hebrew words, we could say, don't let that fool you. Cause that's not really, you know, that's not, I've seen some people who are very, who are wolves in sheep's clothing. So just like there's a remnant in Christianity and there's a remnant in Judaism, and any other version of Judaism out there, there's, there's, there's a remnant even within this so-called Hebrew roots or whatever you want to call this movement. Some people don't like to be called that. They just want to be called believers. They just want to be called, you know, they want to be called Israel. We keep it simple. We meet house to house. We don't have a 501c3 status. We're not known. You can't look into addiction. You can't look into a, a, a phone book or something and find us. You can't find us on the yellow pages. And, you know, it's like, we're grassroots. We're grassroots. We're house to house. It's we're off the grid. We're 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 not five hundred one c three. We're not connected to the government. But even in that, there are wolves. Even in that, who are going around prowling, you know, seeing who they can take advantage of. So, um, but uh, Marshall and then Brother Rod. Um, Thank you so much, brother, for this slide. Um, last, um, about what you just said, but you just you remember the the parable of the wheat and the tares. So like the wheat and the tares, the tares kind of look like the wheat when they are both young, but then it's part of fruits. You know, you can't you can't hide it. But then it's Mashiach who will send his angels to like cast the tares out. But you just the, the thing with um, but like the uh, what, how you were talking about the, the wolves among the sheep. But um, I thank you for that. But about the gospel, you know, I believe that the gospel has been like distorted for so long because the people are, are need need the truth. Um, there's a, uh, the passage in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13. It talks about even the scent have been given into his power that these that came out of the sea. So like the, the sin had been given to his power and, and for that for that long, but now, but now the sins will be taken out from his power when they come out of Babylon. But the father, the father said, come out of her, my people. So we going to be coming. I mean, I come out of, I came out of Babylon. I, I grew up Catholic. It was like, so like how all of us, we come out of all of these man-made religion, all of these false doctrines, all witchcraft and anything that you can call that's Babylonian. So then we call, we come out, but there's so many people even that will be coming out. But I believe that the, the fullness of the gospel are the seed of the woman, those who keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. And one of the disciples said, if you, if you transgress in one of these commandments, you transgress in all. Therefore, they have not received the fullness of the gospel. You know, I mean, it's just like, it's how it's, you got to be, it's got to be one. Either you keep in the commandments and the faith, or, uh, or you're not, you, you, you neither of both. You know, you either got to, it's, it's, it's like, we have to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. And, and, um, and there's people like the Judaism who just keep the commandments, but they don't have the faith. There are people in Christians who just keep the faith, but they don't have the commandments. And once you you, you distort in one law, you've distorted, you, you just, you're like you're transgressing everything. And the gospel is that we we are redeemed from the from the curse. We are redeemed from the yoke of the dragon. That's the the, the power of Christ is that He redeems us from the dragon. So then, so like the the gospel that's still to be like we have so much work to do it's like it it goes like far beyond like our imagination but yeah but yeah will give us time to study you know, we're in need of a lot of improvement uh yes and uh, praise yeah <laughs> that we don't have to have it all together in order to be declared no. yes hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> we don't have to right right you say we don't have to do a lot to in order for us to, to be declared righteous correct yes yeah, so we just have what what well how would you uh define yourself to be turned righteous? Well, I think uh Acts 15, I was gonna say what uh what you were saying, Acts 15 is a no. good example. So you got these Gentiles who see they're at an advantage versus most Gentiles today. The Gentiles no. already were keeping the Sabbath, they were already attending the synagogues every Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were being preached Messiah in the flesh, death and resurrection. Yes. And yes. um they had a council together, the apostles, because they were being told, you have to obey the law of Moses, and then you'll be accepted. If you obey the law of Moses and Messiah, you'll be good. 
and no, that they, t they prayed about it, they talked about it, they debated about it, and they came to the conclusion, no, let's give them a few things to start with, and then they'll have time to grow. Mm -hmm. So they go the sexual they immorality, go sexual immorality high on the list, mm -hmm. fornication, um, idolatry, food offered to idols or food strangled. These are things that Christianity doesn't talk about food strangled. Right. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah. there's a starting point. Oh, yeah. There's a starting yes. point, and it's usually yeah. sexual immorality and idolatry are high on the list. And then you have time to grow. You have time to learn. You have time to learn the law. You have time to learn how to apply these things, how to love your neighbor, you know, how to love Yahuwah. Oh, yeah. Gradually. Uh, even Peter was talking about because they go into the Shabbat, they're going to be gathering. That's the, the more that they go, the more they'll, the, the understanding will, will come. Yep. Uh, they, and I've open. seen it. Yep, I've seen it every time. Yeah. Christians that yeah. transition and start keeping the Shabbat, the revelation just starts coming and they start yeah. growing. Yeah. Exponential, yeah. There's exponential growth. There's an, an acceleration of revelation yeah. and growth. Yes. Um, and the, the last thing I was, uh, the, so the, the, other, the other day I go to this um, homeless shelter kind of place so they have like bible studies but the, the one thing that came to my heart when i was sitting there was how um adam through adam all of us we came down and and mashiach how he was the seed of adam but like, like the seed of david but through his blood it's like the whole world is through like we we are like reconnected as far as um as phys physically and his blood like we are all connected so then once we, we believe the, the righteousness of the father is that we believe in in his son that he said and that's the uh, that that's like him cleansing us from the curse from Adam. So like that's, I don't know if if I can make if I make myself understandable when I say how when we when we are all connected uh, like from Adam and through Mashiach, and he's like the greatest of all ancestors, and he died for us. And now by believing in him, we the the curse from Adam is cleansed. How Ruth Ruth, Ruth and, and Naomi Ruth was 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 clear, uh, um was drafted in. It's like so many Gentiles, the, the prostitutes from the Jericho, like so many different Gentiles were, were drafted into the Israel, Israel, Israel. So how the Father said, Mashiach will be a light to the Gentiles. It's like if they believe, they, he wants them to be one. You know, like he wants those, all of us to be one. But that's the, the one thing that, I, uh, that came upon me when we were talking about, we were talking about the, the righteousness of Yah. It was like how he's perfect in every single possible way of, uh, of like redeeming us, you know. It's like our blood, our soul, our spirit, everything is redeemed just by believing the Mashiach. And um, that's why I believe that the, the, the true righteousness comes from, because when we turn away, that's how the simplicity of the gospel, to just turn away from our iniquities and to believe in Mashiach, what he did on the cross and now he's reigning. Um, yeah. yeah. Praise God, brother. Let me, get, let me let Rod get in here. Brother Rod, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, kind of, make sure that we kind of that we really hear what Chris is asking and I want to be clear that that I'm saying the right thing um because it sounded more like you're looking for a fellowship that you can go to with your family where the truth is being taught is that is that your question my question was it has the true gospel gone out because Saul said, how can they hear without a preacher? Right. Brother D advised that the gospel has gone out and at the same time has been corrupted because you have the gospel in the scripture and it's there accessible to us. But Saul said something that was to me important to that, the, the transmission of the gospel, which how shall they hear? How shall the people hear without a preacher? So I was just trying to get you, you, the brother's opinion and insight on your perspective on the gospel, because I'm, I'm new to the fellowship and I'm listening to um, you all as you all discuss Torah and all of the, all of the scriptures. And what I'm wanting to learn from listening to you all is what, what's your position on the true gospel being preached as I'm hearing it preached from a um and, and like darren l said just for a lack of terms a hebrew roots position a hebraic mind and so right compared to the hebrew roots position and compared to traditional christianity and i include catholicism in that right. has the true gospel truly gone out and who's responsible for now communicating the true gospel 
I mean, is it important that that Messiah was, you know, the king of Israel? Or should we just do like the Catholics have done, which is say, hey, believe in this guy named Jesus, in regards to who he is. Yeah, he's the son of God, but he can also look European. He can also look, you know, Greek. He can look a lot of things, just believe on that, the, the concept. Or do we really know Messiah? Do we really know him as one born and circumcised on the eighth day, who observed and kept Torah, who expounded on Torah, clarified Torah? You know, I'm saying, that are these things important for people to know as believers? Or do we just need to believe that, hey, this guy named Jesus, he died for me and he's the son of God. And that's why I don't have to keep Sabbath. That's why I don't have to keep Torah. Because it's just this dude who named Jesus who died for me, who happens to be the son of God. So I'm just trying to get a different perspective. I'm not, right. and I know I sound passionate when I talk, so it could seem like I'm, I'm maybe I'm being accusatory, but I'm really uh -huh. not. I'm just passionate about the truth. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't take it that way at all. I just wanted to be clear before I said something so that I would be, you know, answer, trying to answer your question. Very good question. I think, um, I think we've all been in that position every last one of us. Um, I would say that uh, the father is raising people up. He's exposing the truth. And you're, you're, you're now involved with a group of brothers that not only have been awakened, but are continually searching to make sure these things are so. So as we, as we look through the scriptures and we find out that we've been uh, deceived, uh, specifically from a Christian or Catholic mindset, and that the scriptures did not have a Hebraic mindset when they speak, when they talk. Uh, we find out that words are not just translated from the Greek, but they came from the Hebrew before that. So we start to learn these different things. We start to understand the scriptures together, and we learn the truth together. And, you know, as we do it, we we're like D just said, our eyes are open more and more as we go. And the truth is being revealed and there is an awakening. The danger though is that we get so hungry for people that sound like us that we fall into these crazy camps that are out there. And I think that it's important uh to latch yourself to a group like this where brothers are 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 honest. <laughs> Uh, when we don't know something, we say, okay, well, let's, let's go to the scriptures and see what it says. You know, what is your opinion? You know, this forum, for instance, everybody gets to give an opinion of what they think they see, and together we find the truth. Because there's only one truth. If the scriptures are true, there's only one truth. So uh, I don't know that I can answer your question holistically. But I can say that we're on a journey to be Bereans and, you know, follow, follow what the Father said do. And I think that because we were du duped in Christianity, we dig that much more. We search that much more. We study that much more. You know, personally, I've learned to put aside the commentaries because all the Christian commentaries say the same thing. And I learned how to use the scripture to commentate scripture. Because if we really look into the word, the New Testament, so-called New Testament, is a regurgitation of the old. So there's nothing new in here. Everything has a reference. That's why as we went through Romans, we were able to connect it to everything in the Old Testament. Uh, and when we learn to do that, we get out of these uh, rabbit holes that these commentaries like to take us down. Commentaries are fine um, because sometimes they can help you clarify what you're reading, but they would be a secondary go-to, spe specifically coming out of Christianity and understanding the Bible as it's meant to be read. So um, I would say that you are being risen up to be one of those people that people come to. You know, you you have been have been pulled out. You have been awakened and you're seeking for truth as we all have. And I think that Yahuwah is raising the men up that are now going to preach the truth. So um, is there one particular assembly? Is there a group of people? I think he's doing it collectively. And I think that he's gonna reach the four corners of the world to do so. 
and we are in that group, I believe. So um, hopefully that brings a little clarity. Yeah, to it, I mean, it, it, no, it did. Yeah. And I, weren't, I, I wasn't expecting for this question to be answered in one setting. I really know that over time, the more I, you know, assemble and listen, that this question will come back up and more and more, more clarity will be brought to, you know, the question. I know it sounds very general in what I said, and I think I intended it to be general so we can think about it throughout this journey. Um, because he said something that was that helped me. He said he believes there's a remnant in Christianity, there's a remnant in Judaism who are coming out. And so I don't want to be totally dismissive, in which I'm not, but I don't want to start leaning that way, being dismissive of all Christians. Um, because they don't see things the way that I'm learning to see them now. That's all. Yeah, I, just yeah, yeah I, I hope you didn't think I was suggesting that. No, 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 no. 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 I was saying Brother D said something that helped me oh, not okay. bear myself, to not right. start looking at even the people that I fellowship with now as Christians and start looking at them with this, like, you know, you guys are not genuine or... But you know that you because you all are just not catching the wave here. Perhaps are Christians truly sincere? But like Brother D said, um, there are there are remnants in you know in various groups that um, Yahoo was just calling out. Absolutely, I think Christianity is probably the most um, a very equal gateway to the truth. You know. There's so many things that, that I learned in Christianity that caused a question and got me to the point where I was like, well, there's got to be something more here, you know, uh, but this doesn't sound like that, you know, so I do believe what DJ said, that there are remnants, there are people that are really searching and that Yahuwah is opening the eyes to, and I, and I believe that, I, I agree with you. We don't throw out Christians, we throw out the Christian doctrine. And there's a difference because there are people, our friends, our family that are waiting <laughs> for the truth. I mean, their hearts are yearning for it because they're not, they can't be being fulfilled. There's an itch that constantly needs to be scratched. That's why we are, all, that's, I know that's why I'm here. Somebody asked me a question and the next thing I know, I'm in devoted to Yah. You know, I'm doing my first Sukkot. You know, I'm I'm learning about the feast days and the, and the set apart days. I'm putting aside all of these pagan holidays because I'm learning. I don't have it all. So if I don't have it all, I can't say or say anything condemning to anyone who doesn't know the truth yet. Specifically Christianity, because that's where I came from. So I agree with you. And no, we don't throw it, throw it away like that. No, we don't dismiss them because they are our, that's the breeding ground. That's who we're supposed to, to preach to, right? So, um, and, just, just for, and just for clarity, Romans eight, it talks about that the carnal mind is at enmity against God and, because it cannot subject itself to the law of God. I believe that the defining line becomes when a Christian shows hatred for the law of God or the law of Moses. In other words, where they start to look at it and say, I'm not following that thing. Oh no, that's a curse. To me, I don't believe those people are saved. To me, that is a line that gets drawn. That's, so I believe that person could have started good. He could have started well, you know, with a real sincere, genuine faith. He had repented of his sins and he, he fell in love with, with the Messiah and he wants to follow the word. and. But somewhere along his journey, he allowed this bad doctrine to come in and distort the truth of God's word. Okay, and I believe that is where the line gets drawn. Absolutely. But I don't believe you need to understand fully that the law of Moses is for us today in order for us to be saved. I don't think that revelation is a prerequisite uh, in order for us to be saved. I think what's a prerequisite for us to be saved is, you know, I mean, I can, I can quote scripture all day, but the scripture is very clear. 
You know, if a person recognizes their own sin, if they know what to do, if they know the right thing to do and they don't do it, to them it is sin. So if a person identifies with what they've done wrong, whether it be pornography, fornication, idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, lying, cheating, and they realize that this Messiah, this man they call Jesus, died for them and resurrected, if they repent from these things that they have done and trust in him and trust in God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because that's most of the time people should be committing to the God of the Bible. If they're not committing to the, if they're committing to the God of the New Testament only, I think that's a different gospel. But if they're being told to follow God and follow the scriptures, most Christians, that's what they're being converted to. They're, they're not being converted to hate the law. Nobody preaches the gospel and says you don't have to follow the law. Well, some probably do. But the majority of Christianity that I know, the majority of Christianity that I know doesn't go around preaching saying you don't have to follow the law anymore as a delivery of the good news to unbelievers. Nobody does that. It's, well, it's through their discipleship journey that they get indoctrinated with this lie. And then well, that's, that's, the, weed. Also too. that's also the weed too. that chokes the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it? The, the weak, you know? Also too, just clearly understanding what repent means. Repent means return to Torah. You know what I mean? So we... we but I don't think that's a prerequisite because that I didn't understand that as a Christian. I that's didn't what understand I was, that I was turning back to Torah. That's what I was just about to say. As a Christian, we're not taught what that means. Right. So, so, so understanding what that means opens the door for them to understand the, the, the law. It brings more clarity and it right. prevents you from, it's like a, it's, it's a shield to prevent you from being distorted by the heresies of this false doctrine that's being preached, Absolutely. which can kill, which can kill the seed of the gospel that's been planted in. Right. That's what I believe. I am definitely going to pray more on this question. Um, because I, I was formulating, Brother Dean, this is for another conversation because I definitely don't want to take up the rest of your time in your teaching. So no, it's maybe fine. I'm, I'm going to add this as a separate video, by the way. I'm going to let this be like a separate open discussion video from the Romans 9. So you're good. Okay. Or the Romans 10, I should say. Can I tell you what this fellowship has done for me? And then perhaps, because I'm open to learn and also to be guided. Um, and I mean that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on this on the Zoom right now while I'm on vacation because I'm committed to learning. And um, the, let me tell you what's, I'm, what's going on in my head so you all can tell me, hey, bro, you might want to reconsider your thoughts. Um, and this is after much, much prayer and meditation in scriptures. I have studied Christian history intensely for the past couple of months since I've um, come into contact with, with this fellowship. And I'm going to tell you, there's some things about the history that has really disgusted me and really is really um, not made me angry, but it's, 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 it's providing answers for me. I've never looked at um, Christian history from um, giving any racial credence to it. I've always looked at it as just these, these men um, who claim to have loved, you know, who they call Jesus and so forth. And they went to spread this message of, and I use Jesus on because that's the name that they teach me to know they didn't teach me to know the name yahuwah they didn't teach me this and i say they those who bear the name of christians they're not teach i hear jesus christ every sunday i hear jesus christ on the tv i don't hear malik hamoshiach and to me that's stealing something away from my faith because if i know him as much malik hamoshiach yahusha that forces me to go and really know him as the god man and not as this transcendent being who has no identity. He's just an enigmatic figure that if I believe on him, but yet I don't know him. I don't know him as the man who walked the Sea of Galilee, preaching the gospel of repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that included also the observance of Torah. So this is the thing that's beginning to open my mind. And I'm going, what Jesus have I been teaching? I've only been teaching and preaching to Jesus who died on the cross, but he's this enigmatic figure until there's an image of a white man on the cross. There's an image of a Greek looking man on the cross or so on and so forth. And I'm saying, if, if they're telling us to believe in this figure who happens to be white on the cross, 
then it's something distorted about this image. So what Jesus am I believing in? And I'm not saying that calling on this Jesus has not brought about salvation because yes, by that name, I was saved. And by that name, I was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. But at the same time, all these years, I'm growing in the Christian faith more than I'm growing in the scriptures or to me, the proper interpretation of it. So now I'm asking myself, if, if the gospel is being taught, I, I, and I'm looking at Acts and I'm going, these men taught from the Torah. They were convincing other men when they met on Shabbat from the Torah. Yeah. Unbelieving Jews were taught about Messiah and those Greeks who were converted to Judaism were taught about Messiah through the scriptures. It wasn't no blanketed, enigmatic figure. He was the risen savior who came to Israel to restore a covenant. And so I'm thinking, how can the gospel just be only about him dying on a cross when there was so much more done in his life and his death and his subsequent victorious resurrection? So that's my train of thought. And I'm not trying to reinvent the gospel, but I'm trying to present a whole, whole view of the gospel. And I, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm presenting that to see if you all can add some insight on, am I going down the right path where I'm not just focusing on Jesus dying alone, as they call him, Jesus dying alone, alone on the cross, or to waken the consciousness of people saying, do you, because I, I have to ask some white people who live in the, in the, in the south of, of the United States, the southeast, which they call the Bible Belt, do you know you're following a Jewish man, number one? And, I'm be, and they will be offended if I told them, you do know Jesus was Jewish, right? The same man that you claim to be your savior, do you know he was not white? Do you know he was not European? Do you know he was actually Jewish? And they will be offended by that because their Jesus is not Jewish. Their Jesus, again, is some enigmatic figure who died for them. And it didn't matter that he was the king of, of, of the Jews, as they called him, or that he was a rabbi as well. And he was considered a prophet. And all that mattered in the gospel because he was fulfilling prophecy. So I'm not, again, brothers, I'm not, I, I know I sound a little passionate about it because Again, connecting with you all has awoken some things in me. And it's not a bad or, I'm not mad or angry. I'm not an angry black man, but I am saying I want to present the gospel in its entirety. And, and yes, um, Messiah's death on the cross is pivotal for the, for the for remission of sin. He's our atonement. But if, 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 if you tell uh, uh, these Christians who are predominantly white and even some black that he was more than just this enigmatic person that he was the king of a nation of people they would be offended by that so i'm gonna stop talking and just let you all um just help me out with this hey chris well if, if i could jump in on on this for you brother hold on mecca let me let me let me respond first um chris i'm gonna say this in love brother you don't have okay. to believe this right now but pray on it one of the first steps of a grieving process is denial one of, the first pro one of the first stages of grief is denial. You're grieving. You're going through the same process we have all gone through. Yeah. And you're trying to, you're, it's, a, it's a normal step. You're saying you're not upset, you're not mad, but you have, you have the right to be upset. <laughs> That's what grief is about. Yeah. Something, you're losing something. Mm -hmm. Something has been taken from you. Something has been taken from you that you're finding out has been taken from you. And it's okay. I just want to let you know, you know, take it, you are on the right path, Chris. Absolutely. 110% on a normal right path, man. This is, this is, I went through this process without any help. I didn't have a fellowship to run to and talk to like you're talking to us right now. I went through all of this by myself. And I lost so many people because I just, I'm a hothead. And the way that I express my grief looks like anger. And I don't share tears until I'm by myself. And I lost a lot of people, but you know, just take your time, keep praying and, and um, embrace all of this, man. You're doing the research. I'm not, there's a lot that I'm not even teaching you. All we're doing is sparking your hunger to, to research yourself and you're seeing the stuff for your with your own eyes we don't have to tell you anything and that's what we want every we want everyone to go through that same process so anyway with that being said um Emeka, go ahead brother okay yeah so 
the first thing I want to tell you is that, you know, Hasatan is is working his his plan out. Number one, with the image. We're told in Exodus, in, in I can't remember what exact chapter it is. Um, we're told not to make anything, any graven images. We're not to make any images of anything that is in heaven or in beneath the earth or in the sea. So number one, by them making, anybody making an image of Hamashiach to tell you this is what he looks like is already them working it against our commandments because we're not supposed to have any image of him because he is in spirit. Number one, he came through in spirit. He didn't come through first in the form of man. You know, he came through in spirit. So by them doing that, it, it, it creates this dilemma that you're talking about for us and for them. This white and black issue of Jesus becomes a bigger deal than it needs to be because if we really worship him in spirit, it wouldn't matter what he looked like. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't matter what he looks like because we know who he came for and we know what the people look like that he did come for. But that is a barrier that is now, you know, has made things difficult for us to connect with those people, with these Gentiles that we are trying to save and, and bring the truth out to them. So that number one is, is you know, and I, I completely, I completely understand, you know, that is, is what I would, I would let, what I would express to them is, do you know that this idol that you've created or that the church created is an abomination? Number one, this idol, this image that you bow down to, white Jesus, black Jesus, it's an abomination. We're not supposed to have him around just for the very reason that we're supposed to worship him in spirit, not in the flesh. Um, number two, I would say that as far as dealing with uh, bringing people into the understanding of, of why he came, we, if you realize from Genesis that he came because of the fall of Adam, that Adam is the first one who had sinned and gotten us to, uh, who had sinned and gotten us to fall out of, you know, what we initially would have been in, which is, you know, the Garden of Eden and, and having the things that we would have naturally. His first sin is what caused all that. So to understand why he came was not just to make up for all of man's sin. It was also, but mainly for Adam's transgression that brought sin into the world. And so when you go into, uh, when you go into the New Testament and you go into, uh, let's say, Mark, uh, you're going into Mark chapter 16. If we look at verse 16, it says, He that believes and is immersed shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. And then it goes into to continue to talk about the signs that follow those that believe, right? And then if we go into the Gospel of Luke, you know, this is really important to understand that, you know, uh, Hamashiach says, uh, so this is him talking to the disciples. It said, and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Hamashiach to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And so that word remission, I look this word up, remission of sin. Remission of sin is the cancellation of debt or a penalty. And so when we look at what the things that were going on in, in Exodus, and we were given the instructions, oh, if you sin, this is your offering you bring. Or if you do this, this is what you need to do. All he did technically was come to erase those penalties and to get those done away with. It doesn't mean that you, it doesn't mean that you, you're not apologetic or that I just continue or, or anybody continues on sinning afterwards and then that every time they can just come back to Hamashiach. The, may, the first thing that it says there was repentance, which means we, which uh, uh, someone just brought out for us. Um, which means repentance means to turn away, I think it was rot, to turn away from your sin. And then two, that he's bringing the remission so that we don't need to go and do all these things to need to be forgiven, you know, because death was some of the punishment. Some people were punished by death. Some people were need, needed to bring offerings. But if we truly repent and we truly accept 
what he came for, which is to be our remission of sin, you know, then we will understand how precious that blood is and that it is not just something to be used all the time or it's an excuse to say, okay, I can't live perfect. I, I can live imperfectly because his blood covers me. It's like, no, listen, that was the blood of a man. That was not only any man, that was the blood of our creator, the son of our creator. So you shouldn't just be trying to throw that blood anywhere. You need to make sure that you maybe it's a one time or two time use that you don't need to continually use. But hey, Mecca, if you could just try to come to a conclusion real quick, because I think a lot of what you're saying, Chris already has an understanding of. Okay, well, yeah. So I mean, that is just you know pretty much it, it, it is the main point. But yeah, no, I, I definitely think that you know as far as the church pushing out is there a true gospel going on are people deceived yes people are deceived they're so indoctrinated that you know this this idea that his blood can just be used all over the place you know and, and, and can cover just about anything and everything if we continue is you know we got to understand that these people are super indoctrinated and so we we have to take that into mindset knowing that and then just be patient with them there was a scripture the other day i read on patience i'll try to find it and send it to you but we just have to be patient with these people and just baby feed them milk until they can try to come into the truth. But I think acknowledging, you know, with the image of Christ, acknowledging that this is not an image you're even supposed to have just because it, it prevents you from really worshiping in spirit is something that will help you along, you know, along the way to ha have, have it make sense for them, you know, and to, and to bring them into a, a better understanding. All right, thanks, Emeka. We got uh, Roy and then Rod. Chris, do you have any any questions or any any? I want to let you get a chance to get some feedback because a lot's being said. I uh, you know I want this to be interactive. So if there's any question or any any comment you want to have before I go to the next person, feel free to feel free to share anything. Well, thank you for that the opportunity. Um, I'm I am gathering the information, so no, not right now. Thank you. Correct. Uh, Roy, go ahead, brother. All right, um, a few things. John seventeen seventeen, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Here, Messiah is praying. He's praying to the Father. He's also praying about the ruach hakodesh, right? Which, um, the ruach is supposed to lead us to know truth. The word is also truth. Um, the Most High, um, Yahusha, he says, who is a true disciple? Right? And a true disciple is going to um, show the spirit or the fruits, the righteous fruit of the spirit. Okay? Um, First John 2. First John 2, I'm um, going to read 3 through 5, which is also prerequisite. Not only is the truth going to uh, um, be sanctified by the truth, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, but it says here, and thereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Thereby we know that we are in him. In short, there's going to be a lot of people, in, and I think Paul had this, where people came in saying that they were followers of the, of the Messiah. They looked like they were disciples of the Messiah, but then they crept in and they started, you know, changing things and it's been it started happening from the beginning and it's increased to now so wherever you go and also the way um darianel said you're gonna have people that know the name of yahuwah as well and they're gonna come and use the name of yahusha as well but you have to know them by the fruits because not everybody that's called okay that's coming in here saying that they're a believer okay you're not gonna know them until they um, show who they really are. So you have to be careful. Understand? Our standard is is the word of God. Are we following Messiah's steps? Messiah says not everybody that's 
says to me, Lord, 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 is going to enter the kingdom. There's a reason for that. Okay, uh, we're going to be like, um, I think Mecca said, somebody said, the tares and the wheat. Right, they're going to rise together. They look the same until they mature. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to go through this, knowing that um, where's the real church? Where's the real gospel? Well, I think it's, we focus on the word. We focus on the power of the gospel. We spoken, focus on the spirit. And the word, as we read the word through the spirit of the most high, it re is revealing stuff to you. It's revealing stuff to me. It's revealing stuff to a lot of us here. I don't have it all together. Understand? I'm still working things through me. And I'm sure we're all working and seeing and learning from one another. But the Ruach is working with all of us. Understand? So do I have it all together? No. Do I have all the answers? No, I do not. But I continue striving to the best of my ability. And, um, and it's not really of me. It's the ability of the Most High. Of the Ruach and me really trying to apply and do the things that, that, that he um, asked me to do. If I know that I'm not supposed to um, pray to idols, but I don't want to get rid of my idols, but then I want to know um, um, the mysteries of of the uh, of of God, but I'm still struggling with the basic fundamentals. How can I go? I, it's like if I don't know the basic of the basic operations of, of multiplication, addition. How am I going to know um, algebra or calculus? It's not going to happen. So the, the, we have to be sanctified by the word. Yeah, we come the way we are. I'm a sinner. I need you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a hard thing, okay? I can't do this on myself. I have issues, okay? And we give it to him. And then we're sanctified through him in that process of belief. But the sanctification comes through the word now. We learn his word and we're taught. So I just want you to meditate on that. Thank you, Roy. Brother Rod. Yeah, brother, I was just going to say uh, what, you, what you're going through right now is, is not abnormal. Um, I, think, I think what D said is about, you know, going through these things, like when, when he, I guess D's movement was several years ago, there was nobody around. And I, I just remember being, you know, when I when stuff started being revealed to me, I was angry. You know what I mean? I was mad. And I was I, I I studied for myself. I told my wife, I said, look, I'm on to something here. When I figure it out, I'll share it with you. you I'm on to something. Leave me alone. Don't talk but, to me. But right now, I just I'm on the study. computer. No, I'm and not ready. No, I'm not then, throwing out the garbage. And then I'm not and done. Then, and then <laughs> I was I was looking for when I would read stuff or hear stuff. You know, specifically dealing with the law. You know, I went to the, all the. I would go to Galatians. I would go to Romans. I'll say, but nah, it says here. And then I would see the truth about it. And I was going back and forth. And you know, and then I finally said, okay, I'm reading something wrong here. You know, uh, one of the one of the first videos when I first got introduced to D was when he went through the Christian fathers, Christian history, in proving that they changed the uh, the Sabbath and how they justified it. And I was just like, yo, you know what I mean? And I started reading some of those scriptures and some of those Tertullian and all them cats. And I was just like, maybe they were lying to me, you know? And, 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 I, and I looked and I saw I had some of those commentaries and I was just like, I was done, you know? And then I started looking for different places to fellowship. I had went to a, uh, uh, messianic fellowship. Oh my goodness! I don't even talk about it. And then mm -hmm. check this out. I don't know if D remembers this, but I had called D. Right? <clears throat> no, I emailed him. He emailed me back, and uh, I think there was something going on at the time. So he just he invited me on the day. So I didn't go through the normal channels the way he does it. <laughs> Right. So I, I went to the, I was on the fellowship and then he called me later. And we had a discussion and he said some things to trouble. Me. You remember that? Day? Yeah. And I was like, yo, I don't know, man. I said, well, let me talk to my wife. And I was just like, well, what the heck? You know, so 
and we prayed about it. And I started looking at it, and I was just like, I saw how, how jacked up it was out there, man. You know what I mean? How jacked up all these so-called Hebrew believers were. And I was like, man, I'm going to call dude back. Look, we got we to gotta get back on that fellowship, you know. And we talked, and then he re-explained some things, and I was like, all right, I get it. All right, so, and we don't need to go into the issue, but you remember, right? It's, it's mainly the cultural difference. Nah, nah, it did, the cultural? Nah, it had to do with, it, nah, it had to do with something else. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, but, but we clarified it. And, but basically what I'm trying to convey to Chris is, brother, I feel when you spoke, that's why I asked you the question again, because I wanted to make sure what you were asking and what you were saying, and I'm right there with you, brother. I, you know, that's why I left you a message. I told you I wanted to share some things with you. So when you get off vacation, we should talk. But, uh, but uh, I, I, would ju- I would just say, man, you are in the right place. His 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 dead men don't wrestle. And you are wrestling, brother. That means you are alive. That means the Ruach is in you. Yep. You are awakened. You are seeing things clearly. You are reading the word for yourself and not listening to somebody else. Yep. You're bouncing those things off of other brothers that think likewise. And we are figuring this out together, man. So uh I understand exactly what you're saying. You know, and uh is so vital and and listen we are blessed i'm gonna tell you right now we are blessed to be a part of this fellowship because i i've talked to some other people and there's some weird stuff out there man and this group is balanced nobody knows it all nobody tries to be above anybody else you know we sharpen each other when we don't know something, we figure it out together. And I just, I just, I, this is the way you study the word, you know? And so, but no, nah, I was just, I was feeling what you were saying. Yeah. I had it again just for clarification and then all that passion came out and I know exactly what you were saying. And I can guarantee you every, I see Keffer shaking his head. I went yeah. through the same stuff because we came out of stuff and then we were searching and then we were looking. So who's teaching the truth? Well, this ain't the truth. You know what I mean? I don't know what they're talking about. You know, so and we go through all those emotions, man. And but that's that's y'all pulling us away from what we're trying to hold on to, man. So hopefully, I got an invitation to uh, go to the alumni the regathering from my Christian college, and I've never gone, never went. I missed twice already. I graduated in 2010. And I missed I missed twice already. It was this year while we were in Sukkot. And I was I actually emailed them back. It was a it was a it was a messenger group on Facebook. So there was a lot of people in there. There were enemies I've made. There were people that hated me because I went this way that were in that group. They blocked me. They caused Facebook to like I believe one of them probably caused my Facebook page to get shut down. But um uh in that message, I said, you know what? I'm actually mentally and emotionally and spiritually ready to actually attend this. I wish I could have, you know, I wish it was a different time because, I, you know, I'm going to be away celebrating the, the, the biblical holiday of, of tabernacles. But I would definitely be ready for the next one. And I would love to share where I'm at. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't. Back then, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to be part of it. I don't want to see nobody. I want to see my teachers. I mean, I, I hurt some of the professors' feelings, man. I told them, you know, our professors lied to us. And, and one of them just, like, just said, ouch. You know, one of them commented on one of my posts. They're like, ouch. You know, that's all they said. And I know I hurt them. It was like, it was just a very in, unpersonal, you know, Facebook post, stupid, horrible communication, horrible way to express yourself avenue that I was using because I didn't, you know, I didn't have anything else, you know. Um, But now, you know, I would love to go back and and meet my professors uh, in the face and meet face to face and and talk to them, you know, in a more calmer way and to let them know I'm 100% sure where I'm at. And, um, you know, whoever has an ear to listen, and if I'm wrong, you can show me. Feel free to show me, you know. But uh, 
But yeah, man, uh, it's taken me a while to get here. And um, but you're in a great place, Chris. You're doing the right things. Um, I love that you're not just taking our word. Again, that's that's huge for me. That's like my favorite thing. Like, I like that everybody doesn't doesn't say my name a lot, you know, in this fellowship. I, I like that you guys only mentioned devoted to Yah just a few times, and it's not like coming out of your mouths every single time. Because I get very leery of that kind of stuff. And I, I get very leery when people just listen to everything that I have to say and say, because D said, because D said, because D said. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like people when people quote pastors and quote elders and always quoting them. And um, I like that the people in this fellowship are very independent. And and I, you know, I put I push that. I push that. I push people to be critical thinkers and to examine and to test everything. Where are your resources? Where's your sources? Cite your sources. Cite your scriptures. You know. So um, anyway, man. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to be said. I think uh, we're all pretty much saying the same things. Um, the gospel is being preached through Christianity, but that same gospel is being trampled on and stomped on. It's part. It's a partial gospel. It's enough for a person to, to make the first steps to being declared righteous, I believe. Not in every Christian church, but... There's the portions of there's a remnant of Christianity that's preaching a good gospel, a decent gospel. Let me put it that way. <laughs> you know, they're preaching against sin. They're not for homosexuality, LGBT. You know, they they understand the idolatry in Hollywood and social media and things to be careful for, and you know, not idolizing sports and all this other stuff. Um, there's a there's a remnant of Christianity that has some good elementary principles to the gospel but at the same time they trample on it by the uh the doctrines of the christian forefathers especially when it comes to dispensationalism and replacement theology i think it's the worst it is the it is the spear that kills in christianity that right there it's just that it really comes down to that. I remember um, one of the brothers, Nazir, I told him that's one of the first things I wanted him to research. I said, go, I want you to do research on dispensationalism and replacement theology and Marcion. Look up, look up those guys, look up what they taught, and then you're going to come to me and summarize what's wrong with it. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, we'll leave it there. It's an open discussion. Um, I hope you don't mind, Chris. I, I put this on YouTube, or if you don't, let me know. Not to put it on YouTube, I'll, I'll take this part out. Uh, let me know. Just give me the verbal okay right now if you're okay. I don't. I don't mind. I, <laughs> it's so fine. It's a real. It's a real question from somebody who is in transition, and I want to have that. I want to show that. I want to. I want that to be seen. That you're not some some teenager kid that just heard about this overnight. Like you're a mature person in Christianity, seasoned uh in the word season in the scriptures and um just to show people that you don't have to be you don't have to be ignorant to scripture to embrace what we're believing oh yeah if that's fine seasoned, if you're seasoned in the word it makes it so much better you know anyway some people have a different opinion of that some people are like oh i wish i had a blank slate i wish i didn't have any of the church father stuff i wish i I actually, I've come to a place where I actually am grateful and I, I actually don't regret um, the good things that I learned from Christianity. I couldn't say that before. There's probably videos on my YouTube channel where I said I wish, I, I hate my Christian background. I want to burn my bachelor's degree. I want to burn everything. And I'm sure there's videos out there where I said something like that. But right now, year 2018, as I speak right now, I'm actually very, very grateful for the good doctrine and the good teaching that I got from Christianity. And uh, I had something to build upon. So this revelation that I, that I recently got from 2011, I just built on top of the good foundation that was already laid for me. And uh, so anyway, with that being said, guys, love you all. Shalom to the YouTube viewers. Again, if you guys have any questions, email me, devoted to ya at gmail.com. I'm not debating you on YouTube. If you're going to try to debate me, a debate about anything that was said here, I'm going to delete the comments. So get in touch with me. Email me. Let's make a phone conversation. If you want to get in touch with anybody from this 
meeting, let me know. I'll let them know, and we'll make it happen. But we're not doing uh, online debates. So uh, shalom to you. Grace and peace.